What's up, folks? Uh, I'm Danny O'Brien. I'm the International Director here at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And uh, we just got hold of an iPhone X. And I don't know whether you watch many of these unboxing videos on YouTube, but there's usually, I don't know, about 20 minutes at the beginning where they don't actually like unbox it. They look like they're going to unbox it, but they don't actually unbox it. They just fill it with like stuff. And so I thought, well, why don't I waste my time more productively and spend this bit of time uh, before I unbox this answering questions that have sort of got an Electronic Frontier Foundation bent. And I'll do that simultaneously or, or, or near simultaneously with um, unboxing this. But by this point, um, most of you will probably be kind of fast forwarding and skipping to try and get to the bit where I actually open the box. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to look like I'm just going to focus on this and it looks like I'm about to unbox it, and then people who've been fast forwarding and skipping will see this and stop, and, um, and I'll be able to talk to them. Great, you're back. Well, the first question we get here at the Electronic Frontier Foundation when we start showing off our iPhone products is they go, don't, don't you guys like hate this sort of stuff? Aren't you like kind of like open source, Linuxy fanatics? Well, the answer to that is no. Uh, technically, we're free software fanatics. GNU. Uh, yes, uh, sorry, GNU free software fanatics. Thanks, Richard, uh, for emailing in. And um, uh, but that's that's also not true. In fact, uh, we we like all software, hardware, all new technology. That's why we uh, have joined here as activists, technologists, and lawyers. And our main interest in this is protecting your right to use the technology that you want. Uh, and protect your ability to sort of transform that, uh, use it the way you want, maybe adapt it, uh, learn from it, and tell other people about it. That's what we're here, and it's sort of in the spirit of, of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, like hacking on things and, and taking a look at stuff. Um, let me tell you about how we actually got this. So um, about a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, we, we knew that Apple was getting sort of small supplies of these, um, these devices, but they, they, they went very quickly. Um, so what we did um, was we wrote a script. The script actually automatically goes to uh, the Apple Store website. Um, it types in my zip code, and then it sort of presses the button automatically. Um, and then looks for the phrase unavailable in any local stores. And if it doesn't see that message, it, uh, it sends me a message going, oh my god, there might be iPhones go crazy. And uh, it worked very well. Um, and what we learned from that is at 6 o'clock in the morning, every day, our local, here in San Francisco, Apple Store gets like maybe two or something like that, iPhone 10s. And um, have I been calling it X all this time? Okay, 10s. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, what I did is I set an alarm um, on my generic Android and uh, woke up at six o'clock and like uh, went down and picked this up. Now, a lot of companies actually uh, get really mad at this kind of uh, use of their websites. And uh, they, they try and take people to court and actually argue in US courts that it should be a criminal offense to uh, uh, basically click on a website funny in this way. And so that means that potentially people who are just exploring the web or playing around with software like this could get arrested and, um, and, and, and uh, the companies would like them to be thrown in jail. So that's what, why we at the Electronic Frontier Foundation um, uh, use our lawyers to defend people like that. And we also try and change the law to make it clearer that actually people should have the right to explore and code and innovate themselves. Um, so uh, if you want to help us with that, we're trying to change the uh, Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Um, and I imagine there's probably a link flying around that, that'll show you how to do that. Okay, so uh, we've probably lost everybody who's fast forwarding to the unboxing now. So I'm gonna do some more. Oh, oh, it's so Apple, made in California. Oh, oh, I bet it makes a clicking noise when I, you know, actually, can I, and this isn't very EFF y, but can I just like take a small moment to, to, to vent a little bit? So if, can we look at this? So if you see here, this says 941 and then, and then a date. Oh, the reason is, is because when Steve Jobs first announced the iPhone, uh, it was at 9.41 40, 
on, uh, on September the 12th, 2007, because this is the 10th anniversary. Um, so that's great, you know how to do that. But now look, look at this, right? So it's 9.41, but it says it's Tuesday, September the 12th, 2007, it wasn't a Tuesday. 2017, it was a Tuesday. This is the 10th anniversary iPhone. So it was l launched on that day, but I mean, it wasn't launched at nine o'clock. Like everybody knows that it was launched at like 11 o'clock. They, they did a different time. So this should say 11.41 Tuesday, September. The, and I've already written a letter but um, on the EFF headed note paper about this. But that's the sort of thing that, you know, if Steve Jobs was alive, right, he'd be like, he'd probably be like kicking someone right now. Or so. so another question that we often get here at the EFF isn't usually about the date. What it's about is that if I'm dissing Steve Jobs or Apple or criticizing people, like can they sue me for copyright or trademark abuse or something like that because th I've put it in the title of my YouTube video? Well, it's a really interesting question. I'm not a lawyer. I just hang out with a lot of lawyers. Uh, and this is not legal advice. And uh, uh, I am not your lawyer. And this is not an attorney client privileged YouTube video unboxing. Um, but what I can tell you is that there is this right called nominative fair use, nominative use. Uh, in, in US law. And uh, what that means is, is that if you want to call an iPhone an iPhone when you're criticizing it, as long as it doesn't sound like Apple, you're like trying to imply that Apple sponsored it, which you may have noticed Apple did not sponsor this, um, or like you're connected in some way, um, then you, you have that, that ability. And that was decided in court Actually, it was a 1992 case, I think, called um, New Kids on the Block versus uh, America News or News America. Uh, apparently, the big problem back in the 90s was that people were talking about New Kids on the Block too much rather than the current moment. Um, and, uh, and that established for everybody else that they were allowed to say New Kids on the Block or Apple online, and you couldn't get sued just for, for doing that. Um, and so that's, a, that's an interesting story. And it also establishes one of the other things we do here at EFF, which is we try and establish new precedents when copyright or trademark law might like encroach on people's abilities to speak freely on, uh, on YouTube or any other vehicle. We send in lawyers and we try and argue why it's important. Okay, so that was probably a lot of conversation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, a I'm actually going, you can stop fast forwarding, I'm actually gonna open this. So a more, if you wanna like, okay, are we all ready? Cause we can't like shoot this anymore. Okay, so um, the other thing that we kind of been getting a lot of questions, oh look, it does make a little clicking noise. Um, oh God, I'm actually getting kind of excited here. So there we go, it's now less shiny in this bright studio lights. I'm going to open up. It is in fact designed by Apple in California by artisans, movie stars, surfers, tech bros. And uh, what we got here, I'm probably going to break that. So the other question that we get, you get the little ear things, but you still have to plug them in. Right? Should I trust Touch ID? Are these things good for my digital security? And we like to say it depends. Um, because uh, we spend a lot of time actually trying to protect people who are pretty vulnerable from targeting from everybody from the NSA to, uh, to you know, stalkers or harassers or petty criminals. And the protection that something like Face ID gives you really depends on who your attacker, who your targeter is. And if you're worried about that kind of thing, you should go to our website, um, security, um, surveillance self-defense, ssd.eff.org, and we sort of walk through this in a, a little bit more detail. Um, that's mostly a sort of tech issue, but the other part of it is actually the law can interface with that too. I should I touch it a bit more, here we go. Oh, it's, oh, it's so magical and intuitive. Um, so the, uh, 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 the way the law interacts with this is kind of interesting in the, the face ID and touch ID um, replace passcodes. And actually in US laws, there's a sort of stronger protections against the government or law enforcement um, demanding that you hand over your passcode as opposed to demanding that you put your finger on your phone or, or that they can stick the 
can do it for the first time, right? They can stick the camera in your face and get it to unlock. And that's actually because of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. In the Fifth Amendment, it, there's an explicit prohib prohibition against um, uh, uh, self-incrimination. And the courts are much more comfortable about the idea of self-incrimination being something about saying something that's in your head and revealing it than they really are about, um, uh, it just mysteriously turned on, that's really creepy, um, than, than uh, handing over your fingerprints or, or, or um, taking a look at your face. So that's another area that we'd love to keep pushing at the law to make sure that the legal protections around face ID and touch ID are uh, just as strong as uh, giving up your passphrase or passcode. Okay, so there's some uh, other stuff that's kind of interesting in this, which is that um, uh, 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 Apple have actually done a couple of other subtler things here to protect your security in a sort of legal framing. One of them is that if you press this, I believe it's this side button, hello, bonjour, alouette, um, if you press that five times, it'll turn off Face ID and Touch ID if you've got an earlier um, uh, now rubbish phone. Uh, and, uh, and that'll disable it. And that's great because if you're in a situation where you think someone's going to try and override Touch ID or force you to, to look into it, um, it'll, it'll switch back. The other thing that Apple has done um, in this case is there's a lot of facial recognition knowledge that the device has on you, uh, but it's all kept locally. So it's not uploaded into the cloud, it's not even uploaded into Apple's servers. And that's great because the amount of legal protection um, that you have against the government or hackers or anyone coming in, or Apple even, coming in and misusing that data, um, it's much better if it's on your device because you own that device, you have legal protections about that device, and, uh, and you can see what's, what's going on. One of the issues here, of course, though, is you kind of have to trust Apple on that, right? They say they're not uploading that data, but because this is a proprietary uh, closed technology, we don't actually have any insight and we don't know whether that's the case. So, and I think it's fair to say that Apple would be in a lot of trouble if it turned out that they were um, handing this data over to the US or, or, or other governments. But with the Snowden revelations, you know, there's often sometimes there are things going on that we don't know about. Um, you may notice that I'm, I'm, I'm actually a Brit, and uh, one of the things here at EFF that we're particularly worried about right now is a British uh, law called the Investigatory Powers uh, uh, Act. And uh, that passed last year, and what it gives the UK government the ability to do is to go to a company like Apple and demand that they change the technology, re-engineer um, what they're doing, and also there's a gag order attached to that. So they can go, you need to change this. You need to create a backdoor for us to be able to pull this data out or undo the encryption. Um, and you can't tell anyone that you changed that. And that's something that's gonna really undermine the trust between individuals and big companies like this. And it means that, that really in these situations where you've given these companies a lot of potential power just based on, on them keeping these secret secrets, that could be all destroyed and undone um, by, by law and by government. And what we're worried about is we've seen this happen in the UK, and the UK is obviously going to go after a lot of these big international companies. We know that they're already putting a lot of pressure on WhatsApp, Facebook, to change their systems. And countries like Australia um, and, uh, and even the United States are looking to adopt that sort of model. So if you see headlines in the next few weeks or months that make a big to-do about how Apple isn't cooperating with uh, the US government or the Australian government. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to set the environment so they can create secret gag orders that will allow them to re-engineer this to maybe hand over this data. Um, so we're obviously kind of fighting that kind of thing. And if you want to know more about that, you can go to our website and learn a little bit more about our battle, including lawsuits um, and including um, uh, uh, speaking to judges and advising people and creating stronger laws um, with our lawyers, technologists, and activists. Okay, I can't believe I spoke this long without touching my, my iPhone. So I think we're going to do some subtler investigative work um, on the product, um, maybe involving downloading some games, checking out their terms of service, make sure that they're 
they're truly privacy protected. But thank you very much. For, oh, it's ringing. Oh, that's kind of weird. That's that is actually weird because I haven't put a I haven't put a SIM code SIM card in in there. Huh. Okay. I'm I'm actually just gonna put that on voicemail for a moment. I bet I I we should probably go. But um. In the meantime, uh, go to our website if you enjoy the rights uh, you have on the internet and you would like to protect them and support us. Um, uh, you can also join uh, your local digital rights uh, group. We have uh, the Electronic Frontier uh, Alliance, lots of really great organizations around the United States, and there are digital rights groups probably in your country as well. And um, I, I, should, I should probably uh, get this. Um, so, uh, new phone, who this?